going on YouTube this is Necro Stevo and it's time for a UU tier match I don't think I've done this before in 6 June before so something a little bit different let's just mix it up today uh, today's opponent is actually Josh aka Ray's gear excellent battler as you can see he brought some pretty unconventional things to UU ha unconventional UU lots of use there UUU the unconventional underused tier uh, but I will leave his channel link in the description for you to go check him out if you'd like. Um, looking at his team, most annoying things there are definitely Porygon 2 and Vaporeon. Vaporeon has the ability to pass wishes to other Pokemon on his team, and Porygon 2 just has the capability to stall and stall and stall. Fortunately, I do have Choice Banded Iron Fisted Infernape, but I will need to play carefully with it as I don't want to bring it in in a situation where it can, um, it'll allow his Mega Pokemon to set up if his Mega Aerodactyl, or allow um, Alakazam to revenge kill something. So I have to play a little bit carefully there. On the other side of things, we did both bring Mega Aerodactyl. Uh, we also both brought Galvantula. So my Galvantula is sashed. His Alakazam is actually sashed. I have a specially defensive Fortress and a physically defensive um, Trevenant. Which uh, I don't, I really, really, really dislike the citrus berry harvest set on Trevenant. So mine actually utilizes a little bit more standard, I guess. Uh, mine has just Horn Leech, Will O Wisp. Um, yeah, those good old shenanigans. So we do see him starting off with his lead Galvantula, just set up Sticky Web. I'm not too worried about Sticky Web at this point in the battle. Just because even at minus one, I'm still going to outspeed Pokemon of his and I need to outspeed. Uh, his Bug Buzz doesn't do really any damage to me to be notable. Um, especially between Leftovers and my ability to rejuvenate HP through Leech Seed. So I'm not really worried about it. I was expecting him to switch and so I decided to just go for Leech Seed again. And that works out because I'm able to hit Porygon 2, although I wish I had burned it. I don't really have an opportunity to Toxic it. So burn would be good residual damage as well since that will stay on him even if he switched out. That's okay though. I figured since he brought in Borgon 2, he probably has Ice Beam. Now's a good time to bring in Fortress and I can get rid of his Sticky Web. I can set up my own Stealth Rocks or my Spikes. Either way, he actually ends up going for Toxic, which I wouldn't have minded on my Trevenant either because I carry Natural Cure instead of Harvest. So not too bothered by Toxic there. He does go out into Vaporeon. I'm assuming he's going to try to burn me with Scald. Don't really want to have that happen to my Fortress since I do have a uh, Gyro Ball on it and it does hit pretty hard, especially things like Mega Aerodactyl. Just a little bit of insurance that I wanted to keep. Uh, Scald fortunately does not burn my Trevenant and he does go for Protect just to get a little bit of recovery of his own leftovers. Of course, he's at full HP, so maybe he was just scouting, I suppose. Either way, He's going to be able to assume that I'm just going to go for Leech Seed again. He goes out into his own Aerodactyl, and I decided to go for a will -O because why would I go for Leech Seed and now if that's what you're expecting? So I actually am able to nail Aerodactyl with the will -O -Wisp, which effectively neuters it unless it's somehow able to set up on me. Now, even with the burn, I didn't want to get hit by a Mega Aerodactyl uh, Aerial Ace or anything like that. So I decided to switch out. He does go ahead and Mega Evolve. And I decided to go into Fortress, even though I am specially defensive. With him being burned, I figured I could take anything pretty well. And as I expected, that doesn't do that much damage at all. So he is hurt by his burn, and since it's not a threat, there's no point in me going for a Gyro Ball right now when I can just set up some more Entry Hazards or Rapid Spin. And so I'm going to go ahead and get rid of his Sticky Web, just so my Infernape can have a little bit more breathing room when attacking his Pokemon. Now he brings back in Vaporeon. Last time I just went straight out into um, my 
Trevenant. And so just to switch things up, I'm just going to stay in and set up spikes this time. Again, especially defensive fortress, not going to take too much damage. And he actually predicted me to switch to Trevenant, so I'm happy I switched up my moves right there. I was able to get up basically a free layer of spikes. So now I was hoping that he wouldn't go for Skull because I was like, I feel a Skull burn coming. And unfortunately, he does get the Skull burn right there, but that's okay. Uh, I'm able to get up another layer of spikes, and since we didn't see a spinner or a defogger, well, I guess Aerodactyl could carry defog, but that's very unlikely. On his side of the seat field, I feel very comfortable setting these things up the way I'm doing so. So expecting another Skull, we go back out into my Trevenant. At this point, with the Leech Seed recovery, I was able to get back up to full health. He does burn me again, unfortunately, but fortunately, Natural Cure will be taking that care of that as soon as I switch out. Ice Beam actually does a fair bit more than I expected it to. I went for Leech Seed there. I really should have gone ahead and gone for the Horn Leech or even the Will-O-Wisp. Um, I just wasn't expecting Ice Beam to do that much damage. Granted, I am uh, a little bit more physically defensive oriented Trevenant here. So with that being said, he's just gonna keep on going for Ice Beams and I'm just gonna go for Horn Leech, hoping to get enough HP back to make it worth my while. And here we see that that Vaporeon is definitely defensively invested because that Horn Leech after the burn doesn't really do anything, even with Trevenant's impressive attack stat. So with that being said, uh, I would like to hold on to Trevenant for a little while. Fortunately, Vaporeon has a pretty high HP stat, so I may, I'm able to get back a good amount through the Leech Seed. But that just means if he's just going to keep on going for Ice Beam, this is a prime time to bring in Infernape. Uh, even if he had gone for Scald, it wouldn't have done that much. But I just didn't see him going for Scald at that time. So that was a little bit risky, but it paid off. Uh, now I'm going to be able to go for kind of just whatever I want. Here I expected him to stay in and let his um, uh, Vaporeon maybe wish or do something like that. So I decided to go for a U-turn. As he switches out into Aerodactyl, it's actually going to die from the burn at the end of the turn. So this gives me a free opportunity to bring in my Galvantula with my sash intact. That turn could not have worked out better in my opinion. Now he does go out into his Alakazam and the way he played it, I knew it was sash. That's fine. I'm just gonna go for Bug Buzz. He goes for Psy Shock. We knock each other down to our respective sashes. But the difference is I have a priority Mach Punch on my Infernape. Whereas I don't know if he, I guess Metagross could carry Bullet Punch as far as priority goes. Uh, not, not too worried about Alakazam now that he's in range for our Mach Punch KO. I switched into Fortress there, hoping that he carried Psychic instead of Psyshock. But of course, he he has the either way. Even if he had the the Psychic or the Psyshock, I don't think I would have lived it after the burn damage. And he does hit the Focus Blast, so a little bit risky there. Unfortunately, I I reveal that I am a Choice Scarf variant of Noivern here. I just go for a U-turn, bouncing back out of there, going to go back on an Infernape, just because it threatens so many members on his team. Now he does go out into his Galvantula, which gets hit by the spikes and the stealth rocks. And at that range, I think a bandit iron fist mock punch will take him out, even though he resisted. And so I'm able to stop him from getting up his sticky web again. Now, unfortunately, this means that I'm locked on mock punch and I know he's not going to scald because he, he really wants to recover his HP. So I decided to try to KO him there and I just barely missed out on it. Very, very close there. I would love to get that Vaporeon out of the way. But now I know he's probably just going to protect. And the best way to take advantage of that is go back out into my own Galvantula, where I can hit him with a Thunder on that weaker, especially defensive side that he has, or set up my Sticky Web. Uh, he just goes for Protect again, probably just Scouting. That's fine. I could have set up the Sticky Web there, I suppose. But I uh, he's really doing well with maximizing the amount of leftover recovery he gets. Now he does bring in Porygon 2 here, who gets hit by a lot of entry hazard damage. Uh, and I was hoping two thunders would be able to take him out But after seeing the damage from the first one I didn't know if the second one would do it So I just decided to volt switch and maybe I rolled max damage on that volt switch But I feel like volt switch did very comparable damage to the thunder attack I don't really know I could have just gone for a second thunder there and gotten rid of it So it was two opportunities there where I just slivers away from taking out his walls But I have Trevenant back in here. We have an opportunity to get some HP back I'm going to go ahead and burn Porygon, so that way I have permanent residual damage on it, um, barring some cleric on his team that I don't know about. Uh, that's going to be better than Leech Seed in this um, certain uh, situation here. 
As he goes for recover one more time, I was really happy that he decided to recover there instead of going for Ice Beam, because now I'm going to be able to get some of that HP back. Uh, I could go for Horn Leech, but but I, I feel much more comfortable with my Trevenant being at this range of HP, because it's important that I keep Trevenant to deal with Vaporeon to a lesser extent. Um, I kind of need my walls for his walls. Uh, I need to whittle them down to a range where Infernape can just come in and kind of just blast them. And so I was actually expecting him to switch out right there. I brought in Galvantula as he just went straight for Ice Beam. So a little bit of a misplay right there. I could have saved Galvantula for Vaporeon. But the free switch in opportunity allows me to bring in Infernape and go for a Bandit Close Combat, which is, that is some very impressive damage, even with Infernape being a jolly nature. Now he brings in Metagross. I haven't seen this Pokemon this entire match, uh, and I wasn't really sure what to expect from it. Maybe Scarfed, maybe Banded. Uh, he just goes for Zen Headbutt, and wow, that just takes out my Trevenant from the range it was at. And so I figured, eh, if I bring in Aerodactyl and Mega Evolve and go for the, the Tough Claws Boosted Crunch, that should be enough to finish off Metagross. But I severely underestimate Metagross's bulk as that doesn't even bring him down to the red. And then he one hit KOs me with a neutral effective Zen Headbutt, which to me is a red flag that he is banded. So we're just gonna bring back in Infernape now that I'm pretty sure that he's banded, finish him off with a close combat. Reason I locked myself into close combat instead of Fire Punch was just in case Vaporeon comes out immediately after. And looking at that entry hazard damage, even after Protect, I felt pretty confident that I can finish him off with another close combat. So he would really need two protects there, I think, to, to live this really powerful hit. But fortunately, he I he either didn't want to try to go for it, he thought he felt comfortable with the HP that he had, and that was not an issue. And even if that didn't work out, I did have a Scarf Noivern in the background with a Boom Burst ready to go. So that was a really, really fun match. I think the last time I posted a battle against Raze Gear, as he mentioned, was way back when the Pokemon Pit was still active. That was one of the first battles I submitted to that. So it was a pleasure to battle you against, sir. I look forward to battling you more in the future. So if you all enjoyed this battle, be sure to leave a like. Go check out Raise Gear's channel if you have a moment. And uh, have a wonderful day. Because you are beautiful. And if you're not beautiful on the outside, then you are surely beautiful on the inside. With a sweet niggity center. I have no idea what I'm talking about. I'm very tired, but I'm still recording, darn it. All right, bye everyone. Have a good day.